Hello. Welcome to Learning Yourself. This is an IG Live show where I get to talk to friends and family about the things that they're learning about themselves during this quarantine season, during this time where we had to sit down and, you know, just kind of be for a little bit, which can be was a blessing in disguise for some people, uh, for some people, maybe not. But, you know, here we are living through this thing together. So um, this is episode eight. We've been doing this for eight weeks. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's been a really nice time. If you haven't watched the previous episodes, please go back and watch. They're all on my page under the IG Live um, uh, section on my Instagram feed and dating back all the way to March if you want to look through and listen to what some people have been learning about themselves. Maybe you have also been learning some of the same things um, and just kind of take advantage of this time to sit, be quiet, be introspective and be reflective. So we are going to welcome Kiara Swanigan, the Captain Gorgeous Queen, period. If you know her, <laughs> then you love her. Um, she is an author. She's a poet. She is a YouTube star, baby. If you haven't jumped on the bandwagon yet, do it now before there ain't no more room. So we will welcome Kiara Swanigan. Please welcome her with me. Hi, everyone. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> first, yeah. of all, first of all, let me say this before we start. I thought I had a whole hour, baby. I thought, <laughs> sis thought she had a whole extra hour. I was in there getting ready, taking my time, talking to my sister. Brandy called me and said, uh, hello. <laughs> the time, the time difference. Um, that's the thing, like remembering time zones and everything, but you made it. <laughs> Kiara, are you there? Did it cut out? I think it might've cut out. I think it might have cut out. She was like, you know what? I need some more time. So <laughs> um, I think it might have cut out a little bit. But yeah, time t the time differences, yeah. Because I'm in Chicago. She's a couple hours behind. So, you know, you got to gotta make sure that you're got the times right. But let's see. Let's see if she can come back through. The devil is busy. He's busy. Busy. I rebuke him in the mighty name of Jesus. What is happening? Amen. What is happening? I'm through the anointing, Kiara. Girl, I don't know what's going on. Can you see? Can you hear me well, first of all? Yes, I can see you and I can hear you, baby. Good. Um, I don't know what's happening, girl. I think we're good now, though. It kept telling me that my request was denied. I don't know. I'm not going to invite you and then deny you. <laughs> I don't know what was happening. Instagram was messing up. <laughs> Let me stop sniffing before they try to call me a crackhead. Girl! <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you heard about yourself this uh -uh, Let me stop. Got to crush that crack up. <laughs> It's just a little allergies. It's just a little yeah, allergies. Right, exactly. I just did a little neti pop because, you know, the, your girl got allergies. So. Yeah, I just did a little. Not you calling it a drug kind of. I just did a little neti pot. Yeah, a little neti pot. Period, Randy. They can crush that crack up. <laughs> um, but hey, girl, I'm so happy to see you. I'm so glad to see you, too. This is like our first real conversation. It is. It and really is. Y'all let me know in the comments if my wig started doing something because I just slapped it on. Brandy just got my heart racing. I really didn't know. I really didn't know. I was like, oh, I got a whole hour. But let's just get into it because right? I don't want to waste your time, girl. 
we can all learn from you. I was telling them that you were the Captain Gorgeous Queen, period. So oh, you. you're proof. You are proving that right now. <laughs> period. Period. Let's, let's get into it. But um, <laughs> what have you been up to during this quarantine? What have I been up to? I've been up to everything and a lot of nothing at the same time. I have been um, trying to heal. I've been doing very well at it and also failing miserably at it. Um, I have been praying a lot and also not praying at all. I have been meditating a lot, but also skipping meditation. Um, I have been starting businesses, not tending to them. Let's just keep it real. Um, but I think that I have been pretty much just trying to maintain myself to the best of my ability, really. That's, that's the gist of it. Trying to spend more time with family. Um, your girl went through a lot last year in 2020, so I'm just recovering from that. So that's why I say some things I'm doing very well, some things I'm not doing so well at, but it's a day-to-day -day thing, you know. We got to do what we can. Yeah, that I'm sure a lot of people are going through. It's not all rainbows and sunshine for everyone. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Especially during this time. Um, exactly. But do you think that you are better off now in 2021 or maybe at the start of all of this absolutely honestly you know i thought i thought i was gonna die last year <laughs> i know that sounds dramatic but i don't know if anybody watching knows this about me but i do have anxiety had some depression definitely got some ptsd and 2020 really did a number on me and um i was very concerned for my life i was very concerned for my mental health last year um but this year, it, the outlook is very, very different. So I'm, I'm happy that I'm at a place that I can manage it. Because when you, um, when you develop that type of mental illness, what they call it, um, when it first happens to you, it's scary because you don't know how to deal with it. So I'm glad that I'm learning more techniques on how to deal with myself in the workplace, with, with my homies, with my family, you know, with, with the small people in my family, you know, younger children. You don't want to teach them, you know, difficult or bad ways to manage your um, emotions. So I find myself talking to my four-year-old niece, letting her know when she cries or when she's upset, you know, having her talk through it. So I'm glad that I'm at that point now because last year, closed myself off, didn't want to talk. I was trying to figure out what was going on. I thought my heart was failing. I was thinking everything. So I can honestly say today, I'm not anywhere near where I was last year. And that's the money. And that's still, you know, like going through that and being present in the moment. You sound very present. Thank you. Yeah. Don't get me to crying on this live. I embarrass well, hey. <laughs> I embarrass you know, very easily. One, one little tear drops you like, oh, Kira has left the building. <laughs> yeah. I got allergies. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's super real, and I love that you are just being honest with us. I think it's great. You never know what someone else is going through, and what you could say could help that next person. Yeah, exactly, exactly that. Mm -hmm. So this kind of goes into some of the things that you had already said. But do you want to add anything to what you've been learning about yourself during this, you know, year and a half? I think the most important thing is um, I've learned that I'm not as weak as I thought I was. And when I say that, I mean, you know, you think certain things will break you and will ruin you forever. Um, I thought that, you know, it, it's, it's weird how strong the human body is. It's weird how strong the human mind is. So just like we experience certain things that shape the way we think today, um, when you start to really realize what your mind can do, you know, okay, wait, this, this won't kill me. This, this, it's impossible for this to kill me. It's just me needing to get a hold of my thoughts, me needing to learn how to control my thoughts because um, this won't take me out. I don't have any health issues. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I have no reason to think that I'm dying. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, and I know that sounds dramatic to the normal person, but when someone is struggling with anxiety and depression, they can't decipher between okay this is just what this is happening to my body because i'm anxious or i'm panicked right now aside from am i actually having a heart attack because the symptoms are the same so um you know i, I i've been learning that it's okay 
and when my heart is racing or when I feel anxious or, or if I'm sweating or, you know, if, if I'm just having any of those symptoms to just take a moment and sit there and they pass every time, you know, sometimes it's a constant reminding of, well, if something was actually wrong with you, your symptoms would get worse as the minutes or hours go by. So usually you're able to just let that feeling pass and you're like, okay, well, that was just an anxiety attack or something. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud of myself and I, child, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> grabbed my tears, Lord. I'm proud of myself because um, I just didn't know. I didn't know how I would end up or where I would be. So I'm just super happy because, hey, little sister. I'm just happy because, um, because I, I'm growing through it. I'm growing through it, and uh, I don't want people to look at me and, 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 and think, you know, that's the crazy girl, or that's the girl that went through this and that, or, you know, because we all go through things, and I think that I, like I said, I embarrass easily, so what I try to portray now is, hey, I'm just like you, but this is what I do to help myself. This is what I do to get past that. There is no shame in my game anymore, because people who judge you are going through worse or the same, you know what I mean? So. Um, yeah, realizing that I'm stronger than I actually thought I was. I bend, I don't break, baby. <laughs> the mind is so powerful because even even in your anxiety, like you're saying something happening in my body or is this happening, is my mind perceiving something? Mm -hmm. but on the flip side of that, your mind, you can be determined to keep going, you know, and, and to um think differently create different pathways in your in your mind and, and that sounds, it sounds right. like those are the things that you're you've been kind of going during this time which exactly. is exactly that it ain't easy it is not easy i tell you this is the hardest thing i have ever had to go through in my entire life and i've been through some very very rough things but the aftermath of what happens in your mind and the things that you didn't know that you were suppressing, when they start to bubble up and you're like, okay, I thought that was behind me, dealing with that is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Because again, it's not just in your mind, it starts to manifest in your body. And that's the scariest part because it's like, does this have the power, back to the other conversation, does this have the power to take me out? And sometimes stress can kill people, but that's people that already have compounded, you know, issues already or, you know, taking drugs on top of whatever their illness is, um, that don't apply to me. <laughs> so I'm I'm just it, it's it's difficult, but also it's it's a good feeling to know that I can control this. Eventually I can move past this. I might be in it right now. In the past I was in the thick of it and thought, oh my goodness, you know, um this moment right here is something that I prayed for. I remember being on my floor and praying for a moment to just, I just wish I could get up and eat something and put my makeup on and slap a wig on and be cute. While I was on that floor laying down with my Sealy braids and a bowl of Cheerios and a cup of water, cause that's all I could eat. <laughs> and I was, you know, looking like skin and bones. And I was just looking at old pictures of myself. Like I, I want to get pretty again. I want to be happy again. I want to laugh and smile again. Um, there was a time I had no energy to sit up and do this. So I'm proud. I'm proud of that. You should, and to Drew. You should be proud of <laughs> So what are some things that you never thought you would do, but you've done it now because of this quarantine season or maybe something you thought was 10 years away, but you started it now? Um... I would say I've had my eye on starting a business um, that I kind of, I don't really want to say what the business is right now because I haven't really, you know, shared that yet, but I've been having my eye on starting this particular business for a long time. And I always, I'm a perfectionist and that's hard because I'm like, well, I can't start it yet because I need this amount of money and I need this type of marketing and I need to make sure that I have this many people following me and, you know, not wanting to make a move until everything is just right. But um, I'm launching that business within the next few weeks and I'm so happy because um, I didn't wait for something to be perfect. If, you know, 
my friends, you guys know, if you're close to me, you know what that business is and, and you know that you've been doing test runs for me. And it's not perfect. It's not something that people who really know me would be like, oh, Kiera produced that because there's some flaws in it, you know? And I make sure things are absolutely perfect before I do it. But I'm like, you know what? Stop holding back. Stop holding back. Things do not have to be perfect. There are people making thousands of dollars with just very mediocre websites and product pictures are just pictures. You know, you don't have to, you know, have your product sitting in a waterfall and, you know, get the right boomerang for it. Girl, just, just start that business, launch that business, do what you got to do, put the prices on there, you know, set up your, your payment options for those people and, and keep it moving. So um, I never thought that I would start a business without going through Kiera's list of things that need to be done first. So I think that's one thing. And I think um, something else that I didn't think I would do is, is step away from dating. Hello. I did not see myself stepping away from dating, period. Um, because I like men. <laughs> I like men's. <laughs> and especially black men and I'm like you know what I want somebody to talk to even if I'm not dating them seriously you know I need somebody and I'm just like you know what I think I'm in a place where I really just truly and honestly want to work on me I'm, I'm not happy dating right now and I haven't found what I wanted and I'm tired of the interview process of it all and I'm ready to walk away from that so um I never thought I would do that or say that at all but baby it's done it's written <laughs> <laughs> at least for right now and until i get back into a, sp a space that feels safe enough to start back dating yeah but right now i'm i'm straight i'm straight it's my business it's me it's my youtube channel it's making writing more books so yeah it's it's you putting yourself first exactly exactly yeah i am numero uno that's that's the thing about it and i don't think that i put myself first in a very long time um, I've been choosing me a lot more lately and, uh, it's different and it's painful. It's painful to choose yourself. You, you would not think that that is something that's painful to do, but it's hard because you, you, you watch your relationships change and then you're thinking about how relationships will change, but you're like, if you don't put yourself first, you are just going to deplete yourself. So, Yeah. Yeah. Tidra kind of talked about that last week. Previous mm -hmm. game. Yeah, she was like, I I don't have the patience anymore to deal with those things that aren't going to serve me. Right. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's real. I mean, I, I during this quarantine season too, and it is painful to see, you know, who's not going to show up for you when you thought that person was going to show up for you. But... <laughs> I'll eventually get past that and I'll be better for it as opposed to trying to follow after that person and like beg them in some words to come back and like stand up for me. But they never do. They know? never do. And they will not because guess what they're doing? They're choosing their selves. Mm -hmm. Somehow women, black women in particular, are the only ones that are not choosing themselves. We have very nurturing spirits and we always want to take care of people. But I'll tell you right now, I know so many black women who are rising up right now and putting their feet down like, hey, what about us? Oh, you ain't going to worry about us? Okay, well, we're going to worry about ourselves. So I'm glad to be a part of that, that tribe, period. Um, and not because we've all coll collectively decided that. It's literally something that's happening in the inside of all of us. It's time to start choosing ourselves, period. Yeah, because we've already seen the bullshit. <laughs> and a thousand times over. We've seen it. <laughs> Quickly. It's time to change my lens. I don't want to see that no more. Cataracts. Period. <laughs> I don't want to see that no more. I'm get, tired. Get the blue blockers. No more. Seriously. Seriously. No <laughs> more. So you kind of touched on it before with the business starting, which is amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, maybe you'll reveal it another time. Tidra writing a book. Maybe in a couple months you want to come back. Um but are there any other ideas that you've come up with during this, you know, past year or things you're thinking about? Yes. Yeah, so um, I, I kind of dabbled into starting like a group, a supportive group for other women who go through or is going through or have been through what I've gone through in this past year. Um, I couldn't maintain it because I was still in the thick of my own sickness at the time. Um and I, I, that's not something I could maintain at the time. But eventually, 
I want it to be a place where uh, something that I wish existed while I was going through that. I was Googling so much and not finding too many people that look like me or grew up like me who's talking about this, which is why my YouTube channel is so important to me because you want to find somebody like you that's going through something, right? Like if you break your leg, you want to figure out how this person healed themselves without having, you know, so much money to go to the best doctors. What if you don't have access to any of that? Um, so that's why I talk about if you don't have a therapist, get on this site or buy this journal or do this type of meditation. Watch this girl on YouTube um, because community is important. And I don't think that the black community talks enough about mental illness. We just kind of mask it because we were taught to keep on going, be independent. You got to do this and that. Take them kids to school. And then there's no time for you to do anything. And, and your mental health is just down the drain. And um, eventually, like I said, I want to make a place both virtual and, and maybe a physical place that I've talked about with y'all as well, my friends, um, that, that women can go to to kind of get that stress and anxiety off of them and talk about what they're going through. Um, that would have helped me a lot. But if, if I'm going to be used to pave the way for it, then so be it, Lord. Um, <laughs> I don't know why you trust me so much, but I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll try my best. I'll say that. Um, period, Brandy, YouTube queen. Period. Period. Um, but yeah, my YouTube channel is important to me because uh, sometimes I even watch my own stuff back over and over again because I'm not just on there talking. You know, whether people are watching it or not, I'm not just on there talking. I'm talking about the things that I've gone through and things that I have experienced and things that have worked for me. And it's therapy for me to talk about it. So, yeah, you know. Yeah. Showing up for yourself, which is going to then pay dividends for all the other people coming up behind you. Yeah. Who, you know, like that community that you had started and will continue to, to birth things in. Yeah. People need that. Women especially are going to need that. Exactly. So you showing up for yourself is then helping you show up for other people. I think that's great. I like that. Yeah. I like, yeah. To, hear it. I like to hear it back. Yes. <laughs> Making your YouTube videos, you don't get that instant feedback. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But it's, it, I mean, I've watched your YouTube video or YouTube video, your channel, you know, for the entire time. And I just really appreciate what it is that you're doing and it's so important. And I shared it with my family. I shared it with another friend, Teke, who was on here. And yeah, I think, I think it's great. And I've only known you virtually. So this, this act even not even being physically in the presence of people, so. Right, yeah, and I appreciate that. Let me just say thank you so much, which is why, you know, as soon as I got my Wi-Fi up and running, I was like, let me let Melissa know, because I told her I was going to be on this show, um, and then I show up late. Child, Lord Jesus. <laughs> but, Listen, uh, again, I was not trying to show up late. Your girl, no. she had time, but um, thank you so you much for the support. <laughs> Like, let me just make an entrance here. Child, listen, I was so embarrassed. Brandy called me. I had my bonnet still on. I ain't had no bra. I, really, honestly, I ain't got no bra on. Nah, I just threw a shirt on, okay? I ain't got no pants on. If we're going to be real, I need to make sure this live really in before I stand up. Y'all going to see everything. <laughs> <laughs> All the way off. Y'all going to see everything. Listen, stretch marks, ashiness. That'll be, that's my next live, IG live series. <laughs> Lord here, what is Brandy talking about? Now? Wow! <laughs> oh, no, she not down there doing that to me. Block her. I can, can, block her out of here. Block her out of this chat. <laughs> out of this chat. But um, <laughs> my last question for you, Kiara. How do you think this, you know, panda bear, this quarantine <laughs> season? How do you think it's impacted? What about for your friends, your family, society in general, work, different things? <sighs> it may, first off, we'll start with the big things and go to the small things. So the world, I mean, it's made me look at the world like it's not a place that's safe for me, which I'm still working on in therapy to not approach the world in the sense of 
I'm not safe here. That's not good, but that's what the pandemic has made me think about. Um, as far as work, um, I felt cared for at work because the job that I was working for said, you know what, everybody go home. They actually closed down a building where they no longer operate from a building, they're straight remote. So I felt like, okay, they care about making sure that, you know, people don't have to come into work all the time. Um, the job that I'm at now, very, very safe precautions. Um, and they're, they're doing their best. So I guess in isolated situations, people are really, really taken care. Um, as far as my family goes, it's made me want to just protect them more. And I know I'm just a little old me and I can't protect everybody. But, um, you know, it, it's made me stress a little bit, if I'm being honest. It's made me stress about them. But I know that they are safe and that they're well. Um, it's made me cling to them more. It's made me want to hang out with them more. It's made me want to call them more, FaceTime more. Um, so that's something that, I, I can honestly say it didn't happen a lot. You know, we, we, we would communicate, but now my little sister just popped up in this live a little while ago, but we FaceTime all the time. You know, my, me and my little niece, she's four. She has an iPad and she'd be calling me, talking about some, what you doing? And I'm like, okay, all right. You want to talk to me all the time. So uh, oh. we talk all the time. So it's made me cherish family a lot more, especially because, you know, people have died behind this pandemic, behind this, you know, COVID-19 situation and um, still family things still go on, conflict, whatever, but you still cling to your people more after going through something like this. Um, so my mother has been, you know, <laughs> amazing when I was going through that mental breakdown last year. And I told y'all I was on my floor. I literally was on my floor, but my mama would come over here and knock on my door, say, get up. Mm -hmm. Woo! <laughs> ha, Lord. she would tell me to get up and we would go to the gym and to the, the grocery store because she's just like get up <laughs> you know <laughs> but um you know she would buy me groceries because I went I went on medical leave and I didn't have any money coming in honey and she would text me, what you need? You know, what, what, what can I buy you? So. A mother's love. A mother's love, you know? So um, it, it, it's, it's reminded me, even right now, it's reminding me that your family loves you and they will do anything for you. So the pandemic has been both a gift and a, and a very terrible curse. I don't want to disrespect anybody that's lost something, you know in that time but it's made some people's connections a lot stronger so um i'm appreciative for god for what he's doing in the mess not appreciative that that exists but appreciative of the way that he's been opening our eyes during this time so child i would say i'm embarrassed but the lord told me it's all right <laughs> don't be embarrassed verbalizing what a lot of people are thinking and I think that people need to hear it especially like you said before like hearing it back to you is really yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's it's to be celebrated like of course we're not celebrating the whole virus but we're celebrating we you know because we have to look at it positively if possible in some kind of way in order to keep moving forward exactly yeah, that's why I'm in the show because it's like we've been in this awful time. What what can we mine out of it to to take forward to the next thing that we want? Absolutely, do? yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. But Kiara, you did it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> thank uh, God. Hallelujah. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming <laughs> to this little old show. Thanks um, for inviting me. Of course, of course. Congratulations on a year of your YouTube channel. Thank you! It's up and up. Period. Thank you so much. Period. Yes. <laughs> it was, I would say it was hard, but it's coming to me easily. You know, sometimes I'm like, oh, I need to hurry up and edit that video. But, you know, when people make YouTube channels, they're like, 
they'll stop for three months. For some reason, I enjoy it. You know, I enjoy getting beautiful and sitting in front of a camera and talking about things. So it hasn't been hard for me. But now that I look back on it, I'm like, that's 365 days mm -hmm. that you've been active, though. So yeah, it's a it's a sign of your healing, I would say. Yeah, 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 for sure. Oh, yes. Some of those videos I was recording and I was going through it right then and there. But, you know, God has a way of protecting you from, you know, people seeing the innermost part of you when it's not time yet. You know what I'm saying? So, like you said, you never know what somebody is going through. So, yeah. Yeah, he's a mighty fortress. <laughs> Melissa, do not get to preaching up on his life. Don't, don't. I'll pull it off. <laughs> if you want to go there, Kira, we will go there. <laughs> you know how them church mothers be pulling their wig off and running. <laughs> I do or at, least, now. at least pull it back a little so there's some airflow. Girl, because you got to make sure your head don't overheat. That's how people be passing out. Yes. They be wearing them wigs and their head be too hot. They you got to learn how to survive in this world. Passed out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me, the beacons and stuff, they got to fan you. That's why, see, I can't run up in here. That's why I told you don't preach. Because if I start running, oh, yeah. ain't no deacons here to fan me. Yeah. You're going to say we're going to see it all. <laughs> Y'all really going to see it all. So, And I'm saving this on my channel. So, or You know what? I was going to ask you, can I, can I download it or save it so I can actually have it as a YouTube video? Oh, yeah. I think I be able to download it. If not, I'll see how long the screen record will last. Yeah, yeah. Technology is special. You're an editing queen. You can figure it out. You got that. You got some period. Oh. Yes. yes. But yes, I would love a, a little cross collaboration on For Kiara sure. Swanigan's YouTube channel. For sure, ma'am. Take it. Take it wrong with it. Do what you will with period. it. <laughs> but yes, thank you so much again for doing this. I'm glad you got that Wi-Fi clicking. Thank you. It was rough. It was rough, didn't it? <laughs> you got it. You got it. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Of course. And uh, sign. Okay, so end it. Sign all the way out before you stand up. Okay, hold on. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> all right. Wait a minute. There we go. Leave. <laughs> yes. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a good night.